I should have got another. Um, I'm on. <laughs> All right. We're going to start, everyone. So this is a demonstration on tracheotomy care. So you're going to walk into your patient's room, and you're going to introduce yourself, and then you're going to identify the client. You're going to explain to them exactly what you're going to be doing so they're not, you know, scared that you're sticking things down their trach and, you know, just wondering what you're doing. So explain the procedure to them, see if they have any questions. You're going to uh, wash your hands and you're going to provide privacy for your patient, pulling the curtain around um, or closing the door. You're going to assist the patient in an appropriate position for this um, care. And that would be like a semi-Fowers or a um, Fowers position. Um, what that will do is help expand the lungs. For our purposes, I just have this mannequin sitting up just so everybody can see. Okay? Then you're going to get your supplies ready. You're going to have a tracheostomy care kit that you need. And there are gloves, sterile gloves in here. However, they're very challenging to use so to keep the sterility. So I always get my own sterile gloves and put them on that are kind of flat and I'm able to put them on without, um, you know, the other glove kind of dangling, which sometimes happens. So I have my gloves. I also have my sterile normal saline that I need. And um, there's a date, time, and initials. I opened this two hours ago. I have my goggles, so I will put them on. What I need to do is open up my tracheostomy care kit. And these are the sterile gloves on top. I'm just going to use those as clean gloves later. Okay? And Adele was talking about that um, sterile field. We can actually touch this sterile field. We can touch the one inch perimeter and I want to use the shiny side facing down. So everything except that one inch perimeter is still sterile. I'm going to take all of the content inside this container and I'm going to uh, transfer it onto my sterile field. It's about six to eight inches. I don't want to go way up here and kind of drop it and I don't want to go too close. So the inside of this is all sterile. There's three different containers in there. I take my normal saline, and since I already had it opened a couple hours ago, I'm going to lip it. And then I'm going to fill up those three um, different sections of the container with my normal saline. So now I'm going to use my clean gloves. And I'll just use these gloves that were in here for sterile. And if I would use these gloves um, as they are for the sterile gloves, I would just get another pair of clean gloves and use them. So I have my clean gloves on, and I go over to the patient, and I remove that inner cannula. Your tracheostomy has an outer that remains inside along the trachea, and then an inner cannula. That's the part that gets removed and gets cleaned. So I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and I'm going to pull it towards me gently with the curvature of that cannula. And I'm going to put it into the soaking solution, the sterile normal saline coat soaking solution. And that will lubricate any exudate and secretions. It also, every um, tracheostomy has a um, drain sponge underneath. So I'm going to take off that drain sponge. I'm going to inspect it because when I do my nurse's note, I'm going to say what um, exudate it has on here, whether it's bloody, whether there's nothing, or whether maybe it's a serosanguinous. After I um, look at it and inspect it, I'm going to put it into my hand, and then I'm going to remove my gloves. And they'll go right into the trash. 
All right. So now I want to put on my sterile gloves. I just have to give myself enough room. I'm going to put on my dominant hand first. So I'm going to take the, the non-dominant hand and I'm going to pinch it at the crease. And put it on. Then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to walk them down underneath that cuffed edge and I'm going to put this glove on. So now I can fix the different fingers that didn't go into the right spot. So both of my hands are now sterile. I don't want to touch my face, push my hair back, or touch anything else um, and keep them up in front of me. I can take this and just put that in the trash. So my hands are sterile. I have a sterile field here. I'm just going to separate the equipment or the supplies that I'm using. There is a sterile drain sponge. There's four gauzes that I'm going to be cleaning with. There are two sterile cotton tipped applicators that I'm going to be using. There's a, uh, a sterile brush that actually cleans the inside. You'll see um, pipe cleaners inside your kit, and we were not going to use the pipe cleaners because evidence-based practice has shown that there's fibers on these pipe cleaners that kind of adhere to the, inner, um, the inside of that inner cannula and um, can cause aspiration. <coughs> there's also trach ties, which is one piece of... Um, trach tie in your equipment and you'll see this used in like say the emergency room or maybe the ICUs. What we normally use is a trach um, collar and the collar is thicker and it has more of a um, like a spongy material and it has velcro on both ends to keep that trach plate in place. So you may or not or you may or may not see this being used. So that's all your equipment. So now you're ready to clean your inner cannula. You can pick up your inner cannula with your non-dominant hand, take your brush, which is sterile, and dip it into the sterile saline, and you're going to clean the inside, going back and forth, sort of like a cleaning a baby's, the inside of like a bottle. And you're going to be pushing any of the excudate that is inside of that inner cannula down into the um, solution. You're going to clean around that lumen at the top and you're going to keep this at eye level and make sure that, there, that it is clean. You can take your brush, you can throw that away. Then you need to rinse this. So you put it into the other section that you put the saline in and you're going to rinse. And the way you're going to dry it is you're going to hold it and you're going to tap it against the inner um, portion of that container and what that does is it dries the inner part of that inner cannula. You don't need to dry the outer part. Um, that moisture will just help lubricate it as it goes back in to the um, trach. So now this is ready to be put back in. So you take it and you go with the curvature because that will just go in line with that trach. So just go in and gently push back and in a lot easier <coughs> on a regular patient. And then you want to go clockwise. And when you go clockwise, you'll actually hear it click and lock. So now you need to clean around that stoma, the patient's, the stoma that that tracheostomy is in. And you take your two cotton tipped applicators and put it in the third normal saline. This hand is there just to support that trach. So you're going to go underneath 
and you're going to go top to bottom. Once, and then throw this away. You're going to take your other cotton tipped applicator and do the same thing on the other side. Pull up that tray plate just a little bit, supporting it top to bottom, and then you're just looking at it just to see what kind of secretions you are getting. Then you're going to take your, um, your gauze, you're going to dip those into the saline, and you're going to clean the outer part of the plate. So you'll start on this side, top to bottom, and swipe down once, and throw that away. And the same thing on the other side. Top to bottom, and just clean that plate. The last two are to dry the plate, so you just fold it up, the same motion, top to bottom, one swipe, and dry it. And then the other side. So your inner cannula is clean, your stoma is clean, and your trach plate is clean. Now you pick up the trach dressing, and that goes underneath that trach on both sides. And this hand helps just support it. Because the more that that trach plate moves, it irritates the actual trachea of the patient. So you kind of lift up that plate, and you put the new trach dressing like that. The um, collar that I talked about needs to be changed once a week or whenever necessary. You may have a patient that has copious secretions that needs to be changed more often. They, like I said, it has Velcro on either side. You're going to put on the new trach collar before you take off the old trach collar. So there is two um, openings on either side of that plate. And you just lift it up and put your new Velcro end in there. You have the patient flex their neck to get it around the back. You bring it around the other side. And then you go in to the other opening. At this point, you can actually take the old one off. Just undo it, bring it around. If it doesn't get caught. And then that can be thrown away also. You want to make sure that you can get two fingers underneath that collar. If you can't get two fingers under there, then maybe it's too tight and you just have to adjust. And if you can get two fingers under there and there's just a lot of room, then you might need to adjust again to make it a little bit tighter. The only other thing I want to tell you is <coughs> there is another type of um, inner cannula. And it's called a disposable inner cannula. It doesn't have it, you, they, it doesn't work interchangeably with the inner cannula that you clean. It comes in a sterile container like this. I already have it opened up. So you just would open, open that top up, and this is in a sterile container. So when you're opening up your field, you actually can open up that um, disposable and put that onto your field. And then you have your clean gloves on. You take out the old um, disposable, and instead of putting it in the solution to clean, you take it out and you throw it away. And then um, you ca when you have your sterile gloves on, you can just pick up this sterile inner cannula. It has two flanges on either side, and you can just compress them. You actually put it in, and it it these two things on either side attach to the out part, the outside of the uh, tracheostomy. So it's there's two different systems. So you may have a patient with a regular inner cannula, like you see here, that has to be cleaned, or you see this being used, where it's just disposed of. The only thing that this eliminates is actually cleaning it and putting it back. You actually take this out.
and just put the new one in. You still, when you use this, you still have to clean around the stoma and you clean around the trach plate also. Once you're done with the patient, you put them in a comfortable position. If they had any oxygen on, you would um, replace the oxygen or put that back on. You would take all of your supplies here that you used and you would throw them in the trash. You would take off your gloves. You're going to wash your hands and you're going to document. You're going to document that you did the procedure, um, a tracheostomy care procedure to your patient. What kind of secretions were on that old drain sponge? Um, how the patient tolerated the procedure um, and just how they responded to the procedure. And that is it. Is there any questions? Um, would this be done like after suctioning or anything like that? Does it have any kind of link to that time period? You normally would suction first and then do your trach care. And before so you do trach care, do you have to um, over oxygenize them for that too or no? You're hyperoxygenating for suctioning, so you don't have to do do it again after trach care. Okay. Right. So yes. So you did it with the um, cotton swab thing. Did yes. Did you see how you did that under the stove? You did it under. You you do it. The actual um, skin stoma. is called a stoma, right. and you're actually using that um, cotton applicator to clean that stoma, which is the skin. So you're lifting up the plate a little bit and going underneath the plate. Right, from top to bottom, yep. Would it be any wet that way? Yes, yes it is. With the um, cold pole mm -hmm. can you wet those before you stick it in? You don't have to. No, they can just go right in. I know that the other one, we, the moisture we said kind of helps lubricate it, but this can go just right in. Is that it? Okay, if you have any questions, let me know.